In 2015, Ventia was awarded the Cox Peninsula Remediation Project in the Northern Territory by the Commonwealth Department of Finance. The Commonwealth had utilised large portions of the peninsula for maritime, communications and defence purposes for more than a hundred years before becoming the subject of the nation's longest running Aboriginal land rights claim. Remediation of the various contaminated areas would allow the transfer of the whole site initially to the Northern Territory Government and ultimately back to the traditional owners. The site contained a range of contaminants requiring different treatment technologies. The contaminants included asbestos, heavy metals and harmful pesticides. Ventia deployed several remediation methods including thermal treatment, immobilisation and disposal both on and off site. The remoteness of the site and the Northern Territory's extreme weather were just two of the many challenges to face the site team on a daily basis. Access by road was a 260 km round trip from Darwin. However, as the Cox Peninsula is situated across Darwin Harbour, it meant the site team could travel by ferry each day, significantly reducing travel time and associated safety risks. As part of its tender submission, Ventia planned every aspect of the works using a state-of-the-art building information model known as BIM. BIM creates an accurate, digital, three-dimensional, virtual model of the project, significantly assisting visualisation and decision-making processes. By using BIM, we were able to demonstrate the many different aspects of the site to our client, who had not previously been able to visualise the project in this way. The 3D animated fly-through was of great benefit to them in helping explain the project features to others in government. One of the three significant areas requiring remediation, known as Section 41, contained the 120-year-old Charles Point Lighthouse. The area surrounding the lighthouse contained asbestos from the old lightkeepers' cottages and other historical buildings. However, the primary contaminant in this area was lead, from decades of degrading lead-based paint formerly used on the old lighthouse. Ventia removed all of the lead contaminated soil to the main site compound in section 34 for treatment. The remediation treatment selected for the lead contaminated soil is a chemical process called immobilization. Immobilization consists of mixing additives to the soil to convert the lead to a type that no longer leaches out of the soil. Ventia used one of only two twin screw high shear mixers in the country to perform the mixing. These machines are known as Track Mounted Soil Recyclers, or TMSRs. The first chemical added to the TMSR was monodicalcium phosphate, which reacts with the lead and moisture in the soil. As this reaction is slightly acidic, a second additive called magnesium oxide is added to neutralise the reaction. The stabilised soil is then buried safely in a permanent containment cell in Section 34, where it can no longer cause harm to the environment. A receiving station 15 kilometres from the main transmitting station, known as Section 32, also required remediation. Whilst this area no longer contained the many antenna aerials it once held, it still contained over 200 concrete footings varying in size, from small to very large. Ventia methodically removed each footing and took them back to Section 34 for testing and crushing. Whilst the antenna footings provided a significant volume of concrete that required crushing, the majority of concrete actually came from the slabs and footings of the many old site buildings that used to exist. The recovered concrete was tested to confirm it was free of contamination before crushing. The uncontaminated crushed concrete was reused on site for access roads and hard stand areas and the excess material was buried in the containment cell. Both sections 32 and 34 contained underground services that required removal. In total, Ventia removed over 15 kilometres of water, gas, electricity, stormwater, sewer and communication services, including 5 kilometres within asbestos pipes. All asbestos pipes, fragments and building products were managed by specialist contractors who disposed of the solid materials in a dedicated asbestos containment cell in Darwin. Only asbestos contaminated soil was disposed in the on-site containment cell. The Section 32 compound required the demolition and removal of not only many concrete slabs and footings, but also a large transmission tower and two smaller radio masts. Interestingly, Two Ospreys had taken up residence on top of the main tower, 
So to protect their home, we designed and constructed a replacement pole and nest. To everyone's delight, the Ospreys returned to take up residence in the purpose-built nest. Perhaps the biggest feature of the remediation strategy for the Cox Peninsula project was the construction of a 27,000 cubic metre containment cell. The cell was the repository for all immobilised lead soil and asbestos contaminated soils. Excess crushed concrete was also placed in this cell. The cell was engineered to be impermeable for long-term and safe containment of the waste materials. The base was lined with nine different materials to ensure that no rain or groundwater could enter and that none of its contents could leach into the surrounding environment. Adding an extra challenge, Darwin's searing temperatures meant that the heat-sensitive liners had to be installed at night. Soils under most building slabs were contaminated with pesticides, which had historically been used to control termites. These soils were remediated using a heating process called direct thermal desorption, or DTD. The soils were fed into a heated rotating drum known as a thermal desorber. The desorber heated the soil to 400 degrees Celsius, which removed the contaminants from the soil, forming a vapour in the process. As the vapour subsequently contained the pesticides, it was then passed through a thermal oxidizer for further treatment and heated to over 900 degrees Celsius. These extreme temperatures caused the pesticides to combust, destroying the contaminants in the process. The subsequent emissions from the stack primarily consist of steam with low concentrations of nitrogen oxides and carbon dioxide. The treated soil, now free of harmful contaminants, was placed in the containment cell or reused on site. Whilst most of the buildings across the three main sites had been removed over time, two large structures still remained inside Section 34. These needed to be demolished as part of the works. Specialist demolition contractors were engaged to undertake this task. They first removed all the asbestos and other hazardous materials, before then demolishing the structures themselves. Ventia recycled as much of the demolished materials as possible and once the buildings were removed, we set about unearthing the extensive concrete slabs and footings in order to access the pesticide contaminated soils underneath. Across the peninsula there were numerous uncontrolled tip sites containing asbestos and other contaminants. Ventia excavated these sites and transferred the wastes to the main containment cell for permanent and safe storage. The tip sites were then backfilled with clean soil that was stockpiled earlier during excavation of the main containment cell. In addition to the tip sites, waste material from an old temporary cell also needed to be remediated. The cell had been constructed by Ventia years earlier for short-term storage. Its contents, containing mostly asbestos contaminated soil, was excavated and transferred to the main on-site containment cell. The temporary cell, now empty, was then backfilled with clean soil and graded to match the surrounding area. Once the main cell had been filled with the various wastes from across the peninsula, it required capping to ensure the long-term and safe containment of those waste materials. Like the base lining, the cell cap was highly engineered and whilst the base had nine liners, the cap had eight, a total of 17 in all. After all the capping liners were laid, the surface of the cell was then sprayed with native grass seeds. An unusual and unexpected aspect of the project involved the removal of four underground antenna earth wire grids found to the north of the main site. The removal of these large areas of copper wires required a mechanised solution due to the vast area they covered. Under a previous contract, also undertaken by Ventia, nearly 900 bulker bags containing various contaminants were temporarily stored in 44 shipping containers to protect them from tropical cyclones until they could be treated. Ventia was required to reclassify their contents and undertake the necessary treatment, which included thermal desorption, chemical immobilization, on-site disposal and off-site disposal. Ventia also designed and constructed a remote bore water facility as a source of on-site construction water and for future users of the area. The facility was remotely activated with water pumped three kilometres to the main site compound via a new underground pipeline. From the project outset, 
Ventia used a drone to capture the progress of works. The drone not only allowed an excellent video and photographic record to be kept, but the site team used the aerial images to plan areas of the work, mark up areas on large-scale prints for regular safety briefings, and to train newcomers and visitors on the various site features. As our client resided in Canberra, they were particularly pleased to receive such regular and informative progress updates by way of the drone's aerial photographs and videos. At Ventia, we put safety and health above all else. With such a remote project spread across numerous sites and containing various types of contamination, it was a testament to Ventia's strong safety procedures that no lost time injuries were recorded over the life of the project. Nearly 90,000 man-hours were worked on site, and in addition to there being no lost time injuries, we also achieved zero medical treatment injuries or restricted work injuries. Working with the local Indigenous community was a strong focus for this project, and ultimately 35% of the project team was Indigenous. As part of our commitment to working with the traditional owners of the land, we engaged the Northern Land Council's Kenby Ranger Group to deliver land management, heritage monitoring, site labour, transport and security services. One of the rangers is a respected Aboriginal artist and was so pleased with Ventia cleaning up his country that he painted a special artwork for us that incorporated our thermal treatment plant and some of his revered native animals. Ventia also extended training opportunities to each member of the rangers, providing individuals and the group as a whole with additional skills for the future. This collaborative approach saw Ventia and the Kenby Rangers awarded Best Collaboration in the Northern Territory Natural Resource Management Awards 2016. Though the project site was quite remote, Ventia still recognised the importance of close community involvement. Ventia assisted in writing community updates, holding several community site tours and meetings, using local businesses and making donations to worthy local causes. We're proud to have played a large role in this iconic project. Combining our remediation and environmental expertise with a community focus to successfully deliver this land back to its traditional owners.